Hey folks, welcome to the Do It Yourself Dad channel. Today I'm gonna to be showing you how I keep my backyard cool. Now we live in the American Southwest and it gets really, really hot. You can see got the sun up there, it is cooking us. It was well over 100 today and most of our summers are about that hot. So I'm gonna show you the two ways that I keep my backyard cool. Now the first thing is shade sails. Now this one, you can see behind me, we've got it up over our pool and it does a really great job of keeping it cool, but it also means we can stay longer in the pool without getting sunburned. Now I've got a whole video on how I put these shade sails up. Over on the other side of my yard, I actually have a koi pond and uh, I had the same problems with that where the water temperature was getting too high in this thing. So I put shade sails up over that. I don't have it up right now, but it's probably going to go up soon. But if you can see in the background, I've got posts up on the hill to put that shade sail up. And that's gonna be going up probably pretty soon as the temperature starts increasing with us this summer. Now, that's the first way I've been doing it. Obviously, you can do things like plant trees. I've got trees, but if it's hot now, those take years to grow. Patio covers are great too, but they're pretty expensive. These, you can put them up for about 50 bucks. Maybe a little bit more if you've gotta get posts and cement. But you can do it yourself in a couple of hours quick and easy. So I've got a video down below that shows you all how to do that. But right now I want to talk about the other way I air condition the air. Now that's always an age old dad joke of, you know, what are you doing air conditioning the outside when you leave the door open, but we're doing it with these. We've got a mist system. Now we actually have two. We have a mist system here that's hard lined with PVC. And I've got another one that goes above the yard. That's a flexible line and I have it running up there with paracord. Now there are obviously different ways to install these. And this is a more basic system, but it's something you can do real quick in a couple hours, probably less time than that on a weekend. So I'm gonna show you real quick how these systems work and what's involved in maintaining them. It's not too hard. It might be something you wanna check out. So let me show you the one that's over the grass first. Now, the nice thing is both systems use the same emitter heads here. These are brass and it is a flexible line and I've got it running across the yard. I wanted it over the grass. I keep calling it this grass, but it's plastic. This is artificial grass and it does get really hot in the summertime. So having this over it keeps the air cool, but it also keeps the grass pretty cool as well. Now, what's great with these is if you've got kind of a strange installation situation here, or if you're trying to run it underneath the eaves of your house like this, this gives you a lot of flexibility because you can run the line all over the place and you can string it across gaps like this using a little bit of cord. The operation of these is also really simple. It's just a, a hose line that connects into your hose bib. So if you flip this on, all of the misters start running. Something to think about when you're installing one of these is where you're putting it in the yard. If you have a backyard where there's a constant breeze going in one direction, um, and you might wanna check, kinda pay attention over the course of a couple days how the breeze blows, you want it to blow into your yard. If you're doing this and it's just blowing into the neighbor's yard or often in the middle of nowhere, it's not gonna do you any good. So pay attention to where it is and that'll determine where you want to install it. Now, something else to think about is where you live. If you're in a hot, dry climate, American Southwest, desert, something like that, this is gonna work really well because it works on evaporative cooling and it really does a good job taking the bite out of the air. However, if your air is already humid because you live in a place like Florida or Georgia or something like this, this is not the kind of system you wanna go with. It's really not gonna do you any good. It's just gonna make it more humid and more miserable. Now, most of these systems you can pick up at your local hardware store, but I also have links for them down below if you wanna check them out online and get them delivered straight to your house. Now, coming over to my patio cover, this is the first system I installed in my backyard. This is actually hard lined in with PVC. Now, you can see here it uses the exact same brass heads, which is really nice and convenient. And when you buy these kits, generally they don't come with the lengths of PVC pipe, but they will come with these fittings. They have a little threaded connector and you can screw the head into it. Now these work pretty much the same way. I've got it hooked to my hose bib. You give it a quarter turn and your water's running. Now when you're using the PVC pipe one, a handy little extra are these. These are have a little brass thread on one side and the little spray nozzle on the other side. And it allows you to turn them and get them going in different directions depending upon what you need. One other thing that all these systems are gonna have is this. This is a drain. So when you shut the system off, and the pressure is relieved. There's a little valve in here that opens up and it drains all the excess water out of it. And that is really important. Let me tell you why. And that is because bacteria loves damp, hot places. And that's what those lines are when you're not using them. So um, it can actually build up gunk inside there. And I've actually seen recently, there's been some press releases about Legionnaire's disease. Um, 
in there. And you think about it, if you get bacteria and whatnot in there and then you pressurize it and spray it, you've like weaponized it. So having it drain the line out when you're done and letting it dry out completely is very important. Um, now, let's talk about maintenance and what's involved in maintaining one of these systems. Now, going down the line, sometimes I've noticed that these things do clog up and they clog up for a couple reasons. If you've got stuff in your water supply, it can clog up the ends, but you really shouldn't. But what re really happens more often than that is probably what's going on with this one. This one probably has some calcium deposits, you know, hard water deposits in the end of it. Sometimes I can get over to them and just with a fingernail, you can almost, I don't know if you can hear it. There we go. You can clear the deposit because usually it's right on the outside, but you do have to clean these heads. So let's see how we do that. Now, just now when I fired up the system, I noticed that this head was not really working correctly. So we're going to take it off. And these things, you just unscrew them with your hands, which is nice. Since I just shut it off, there is a little bit of water in the line. And there was one over here as well that was also not flowing. So we're going to take this one off as well. And I'll show you how we clean these. So now we're in the garage, I'm going to show you two ways to clean these nozzles. I'd love to say that my workbench usually doesn't look like this, but I'd be lying. It's usually worse. You can actually see the top of it, which is something of a miracle. Now, while I'm in here, I do want to mention one thing. It's over 100 degrees outside right now, and I'm in my garage, and it's comfortable. And that's because I did a bunch of stuff to make the garage more comfortable. If you're dealing with the heat in your backyard, you're probably dealing with your garage right now, too. And I've got a couple videos showing all the things we did to make this garage more comfortable, including uh, flaps on the vents, insulating the garage door, sealing, installing air conditioning, and whatnot. So check out those. They're going to be linked down below as well if it's something that you're dealing with because we certainly are here. But let me show you how we clean these. Now, how I clean mine is with this. This is a ultrasonic cleaner. You just take these things, throw them in the cleaning solution, which is water with a little bit of a, uh, basically it's almost like a soap or detergent you put in there and turn it on. And it makes a very, very high pitch vibration that helps break up the surface tension in there. Science happens, blah, 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 blah. And they get clean. These things are great. You don't need one. I'm going to show you another way to do it in just a second, but I've cleaned gun parts, carburetors, car parts, all sorts of stuff in this thing over the years. So they're not that much. I've got a link down in the description. If you want to check them out, but you don't need it. I'm going to show you the other way you can clean them, which is real quick and easy. And that's with white vinegar, just a little bit of white vinegar, throw them in there, let them sit an hour. You'll be good to go. That's really all you need to do to clean these things. I do like this. It's pretty quick, you know, five minutes and I'm done versus an hour with white vinegar, but white vinegar is free or almost free because you probably already have some in your kitchen. So that's how we clean them. We let them soak in there, dry them off, and then reinstall them and you are good to go. Now, I hope this video helped you out. I hope it's going to help you make your backyard a little bit more comfortable and a little bit more enjoyable so you can get some more usage out of it this summer. Now, please hit that subscribe button down below. Like I mentioned before, it really does help us out. Give this video a thumbs up if you got something from it and leave me a comment down below. Let me know what kind of stuff around the house that you're working on or if you want any tips, tricks or anything like that I'm here to help you out. But right now it is hot. So thanks for watching. I'm going to go for a dip in the pool.